Okay, so today I would like to do a little bit of a tutorial style video on using the Commodore Machine Language Monitor. What I'm going to show in today's video, work with the Machine Language Monitor that was included with the uh, TED series, like the 16 and the Plus 4, as well as the uh, Commodore 128. They have this monitor built into ROM. This also applies to Jim Butterfield's Supermon 64, which is essentially the same thing as what came built into ROM on the TED and 128 machines. There's a lot of really cool things you can do in the monitor, so let's get right into it. For today's video, I'm going to be using the Commodore 128 with the built-in monitor. The 128 is one of the machines that has a built-in to ROM. And you can access the monitor by simply typing monitor at the prompt. It's the same deal for the TED machines, but if you're using the Supermon 64 on the C64, you have to load it from disk. So now that we're in the monitor, there's lots of things we can do. First thing I'm going to show you is how to view an area of memory, and we can do that by using the M command. So for example, we can type in like M1300, which will show us which will show us the contents of RAM at 1300 and the next little bit following 1300. So what we are looking at right now is the actual contents of the computer's memory, or at least a small little portion of it. We can manually edit it by simply just cursoring up and typing numbers in. We can enter in various different numbers for different things, as well as we can even enter in small machine language programs, like this one I put in at the top. See if you can guess what this does. Now let's exit out of the monitor by typing X. And then we can type SYS4864, which is hex for 1300. There you go. This, this is a simple little program that just increments the uh, watercolor register very fast. I shrunk it down a little bit in post because it's just a little hard on the eyes. But it's a good illustration of how fast and efficient machine language is compared to higher level languages. Just for comparison, here's the same program in BASIC. So I know some of you might be wondering, what's this little uh, bar on the side with the uh, text characters? Well, it's actually mainly used for finding strings within code. So I'm going to tell it to list the memory range from within the ROM for F41B9 to F4249. And this is the area in ROM where the startup message is stored. As you can see, if we look in the little column on the side, we can see the startup message. Commodore Basic Version 7, how many bytes free, copyright 1986 Commodore. So I showed you manually entering the machine code, but I'm going to show you how to enter an assembly code. So you can do this by either using a period or an A. I'm going to use an A here. Then we need to specify our start address, so we're just going to go 1300 again. And then we're going to specify our first instruction. And then from here on in, we do not need to specify the memory address. It'll just automatically figure out the memory address. And as you can see, we can enter in our instructions and it converts it to machine code. So the machine code's on the left and the assembly's on the right. So it's cool to see that happening in real time. Okay, so now that we're done our program here, let's view memory location 1300. And there's our program on the top. As you can see, it matches the machine code from up above. And as you can see, I've keyed in Hello World below it. And from that, you can probably guess what this program does. Most overused example program ever. But let's say we want to get rid of our lovely little program here. That's where the F or fill command comes in. So for this, we just type an F, followed by the start address of the block we want to fill with the number, and the end address of the block we want to fill with the number, followed by the number we want to fill that block with, in this case, zero. Now all the values in that area of memory have been replaced with zero. The machine language monitor also gives us the ability to disassemble machine code back into assembly code. So here I've typed that little border increment program back in again, and to disassemble machine code back into assembly code, we type a D, followed by the range in memory we want to, that our code is we want to disassemble. As you can see, there's the assembly code. Unfortunately, any sort of labels or anything that would have been in the original .asm file are not preserved here, obviously. So next I'm going to show you how to load and save stuff. 
So I've got this little program here and I want to save it to disk. So I'm going to go S followed by the name we want to call it, followed by the device number of the floppy drive we want to save it to. And then we're going to follow that by the starting address of the program, followed by the end address of the program. So for any of you curious as to what this program does, let's run it here. Some of you probably recognize this from a fairly recent video I did. So uh, just yesterday, or yesterday as of when I'm recording this part of the narration, 8-Bit uh, Show and Tell released a video showing off how to make the uh, random maze program in assembly language. The one that he came up with was a bit more efficient and it's just a little bit better than what I came up with, so I recommend you go check that out. It's pretty interesting. So next I'm going to show you how to load a program from disk. So you, for this you just type L, followed by the file name, followed by the start address. And now that program will be loaded into that memory address. And just to prove it to you, here it is running. And while we're on the topic of saving and loading stuff from disk, typing in at sign will give you the status of the drive. So this next function I'm going to show you is called hunt. And what it allows you to do is it allows you, it'll basically hunt through a specified range in memory and it'll find all the memory locations that contain the value that you specify. So we can go for example here, H for hunt. And then we're going to specify those memory addresses that we put in earlier where the uh, startup message is stored. And we're going to put in the character code for C, which is 4, 3, and hex. And then it's going to display a list of all the memory locations that contain the letter C in the specified range. So now we're going to move on to comparing two areas of memory. So we're going to use that with go figure the C command for compare. Then we're going to put in a memory range. So in this case, we're going to be 1300 to 13 FF. And then we're going to compare that to 1400 to 14 FF. So for this, we just need to specify the start and stop address for the first area of memory. And then it assumes the stop address of the second area of memory based on the, the stop address of the first area. And when we run it, it'll display a list of locate memory locations that where its contents do not agree. So I guess the contents of 1326 are not the same as 1426. So the next thing I'm going to show you here, and we're almost done, is how to transfer the contents of one area of memory to another. So I've got my little flashing border program in again up there, and we're going to go. We're going to enter the start address of the area we want to transfer, then the end address of the area we want to transfer, and then the start address of the new area we want to transfer it to. And so we're transferring from 1300 to 1400, and now when we view 1400, as you can see it's been copied there. So the final thing I'm going to show you here is how to view and modify the in CPU's internal registers from the monitor. When we first start the monitor, it actually gives us a readout of the program counter, the status register, the accumulator, the X register, Y register, and stack pointer. And we can modify them by typing a semicolon followed by the new status status. So we're going to leave the program counter the same, status register the same. But let's change the value of the accumulator. Let's put like 5, 6 in there. And let's change the value of the X register, and let's leave Y and the stack pointer the same. Once the monitor is started, we can view the status of the, these registers by typing R. As you can see, our changes do show up there. One thing I really love about, one of my favorite parts about these older computers, is just how easy it is to get in and modify them on a very low level. Like, it's very difficult to manually set your CPU's internal registers on a modern computer, whereas it's actually quite easy here. I can write this little program, and let's run it. And as you can see, it's changed our registers there. You can see it's changed the X and Y registers there. So yeah, this is very cool. You just don't get this with modern computers. Everything's just so high off the processor and very abstract. It's less abstract to humans, but more abstract for computers. So anyway, that's just about it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you may learn something. Uh, what do you think of me doing, doing more like educational style videos? Let me know what you think. But anyway, thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Okay, so one bonus thing. You can look really cool 
if you just set the uh, background color to black and set the text color to green and tell it to view a large area of memory so you get a bunch of numbers scrolling up the screen. <laughs> Oh my goodness, are you hacking? You must be so smart. You see, I just got a new printer and I need help setting it up, so you'd be perfect for that. Maybe if I ignore it, it will go away. <laughs> <laughs>